today in Woburn. I'm your host, Samantha Stone. You all can't see what I can see right now, but three of our guests have matching shirts. So we'll talk a little bit about that in our last segment today. <laughs> but um, I am, uh, I feel that bad that nobody color coordinated with me. I was a little left out, um, but uh, pure coincidence, but, but fun nonetheless. So we have, uh, of course, our mayor, Scott Galvin. We're having a city update and talk about some things that are going on in the city. Then we have special guest Suzanne, who's going to hear from the Tanner Tatas about that important organization and the hard work that happens there. And then we have Rena and Dale, who are going to join us to talk all about the menorah lighting um, that we have going on. And we'll chat about that in the last segment today. So welcome. Glad to have you, Scott. You too. It's good to be here, Samantha. And I am one of the three with the same color. Sure. <laughs> I, uh, I love it. It's a blue kind of day. So um, I, I just didn't get the memo. Um, but we are, um, it looked like we had a really good um, participation in the vaccine clinic this uh, past Saturday, right? Did I read there were 300 people? Yes, it was, it was, uh, it was, a, I'd say a success and a uh, lot of, a lot of, uh, Five to eleven-year-olds came down. It was good to see uh, them taking taking um, taking advantage of the the uh, clinic. And, and you know, we have about twenty-eight to just around 2,800, 2,900 uh, students in that age group, five to eleven. So you know that that's a small dent in what we need to do, Samantha, to get get more of those that age group vaccinated. But Wuben PD, Wuben Pediatrics is really. Uh, doing a great job uh, with the outreach and getting our students vaccinated. I think they, they're doing about 300 a week. So uh, I don't want to say what they're up to. I think this is their third week. Um, and then of course, CVS is, you know, a really easy site to get to. If you, if you're good with the internet, there's plenty of um, plenty of opportunity there. So I think, I think we're going to get there and you know, we'll keep plugging. We're uh, looking into doing another, um, an additional vaccine clinic for that age group. The second shot is scheduled for December 11th, so um, we'll get that done. And now we've also got uh, a number of calls for uh, the booster shot, for which is now available to anybody over 18. So that's starting to become a hot issue. But but again, that's readily available at CVS. I've got mine scheduled for November 29th. But the more that you have, of course, the more opportunities, the better it is. So we're looking into that to provide it to our employees and and uh, you know the elderly and our residents. So we'll be looking at that in the next half a week or so. Great. Thanks for the update. We're almost at Thanksgiving. Um, it's uh, My kitchen is going to smell so good in about 72 hours. Well, I hope it smells good. We're all in trouble since I host. Um, how does your family celebrate, Scott? So we go to my mother's house. She lives over uh, on Parliament Lane. That's where I grew up, um, right off of Russell Street. So we'll go over there. My brother will be there with his family and, and my family will be there. But uh, it, it'll be fun. Nice. It'll be... So still will be... Go ahead. We'll be missing two. My uh, my son's still in San Diego. He'll be back December 18th for a couple of weeks. And then my daughter, who's a senior in, in college, and uh, I don't know how she pulled this one up, but a bunch of her friends are going to uh, Nashville and not joining us. I'm a little, yeah. Uh, uh, she she was smarter. She was smarter than maybe I was during the holidays. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they, these kids are pretty coy these days. But I think there's about 12 of them going down. So they'll have a great time. They'll be there for uh, the weekend. So we'll miss well, it. That, that sounds lovely. And, um, you know, this is a different Thanksgiving than last year. Last year we were all, you know, had to be much more careful. Um, and there was far fewer people who were vaccinated. And um, so last year I didn't host it all this year. I'll be having a very, actually a small gathering and then a different group of people on Friday, but um, I'm really excited to, to get most. One of my babies isn't going to be here either, but they are not in exciting Nashville, having fun with friends, they just got stuck working. <laughs> so, you know, it's great that Thanksgiving is, it's a, it's a great holiday. It's always one of the, one of my favorites, but uh, looking forward to it. And this, you know, there's a lot of, I know you've got a couple of guests coming up or we're looking forward to their uh, event on Sunday. I'm sure there'll be, there was great participation last year, which you spearheaded and got off the ground. And I know uh, it was uh, very gratifying to you. It was gratifying to me as well. It was a, it was a good event, Samantha. So, uh, Thank you for getting it going. I know you had other people helping you, but you were you yeah. kind of spearheaded that. And uh, I'm sure that's going to be a, a yearly tradition. So looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. We'll talk about that with Rena and Dale, who were definitely really important and instrumental. Rena was my bit of inspiration last year that really got us going. So um, I'm I'm really excited about that. We have festival on the common this weekend as well. Um, and that starts at three o'clock if I'm Correct. Three o'clock on Saturday. The weather's looking good, and it's always, you know, uh, 
a great uh, community event. There's a lot of things to do for the for children and, and adults alike. So looking forward to that. And I know you've had somebody on to go over all that, but it's going to be a, another good event. And of course, we didn't do it last year. So I expect we all expect a big crowd and a festive crowd. So looking forward to it. Yeah, it's really um, one of my favorites. It's it, kind of a fun time, really kicks off the holiday season for me. I always come home and want to put my Christmas tree right away up. And my my <laughs> husband's like, December 1st, December, you know. <laughs> so we'll we'll see if I stave off till December 1st, but we're looking forward to it. Um, I had a, a, a couple people ask um, what it's sort of an operational question, Scott. So um, we as a city provide, you know, have sand and things that we treat the roads with. And there is oh, usually a supply for residents can come with a bucket or something and take something for their own driveways and, you know, to help to sort of help out clean things open, um, keep things safe. Um, is that happening this year? And do you know about when that will be available? They, they do it every year and it, it, it'll be available right when, right when the uh, roads, hopefully not soon start icing, but it's all, yeah. they, they make it available. So, uh, you know, that's a good point. And we'll make sure we put something out on the city's website. And, uh, but they're always making it. Like, and geez, I know you, you probably realize the salt prices have gone up 50%. So we used to get salt for 40, 40 bucks a ton. Now it's up to 60. So, uh, you know, it's going to be an expensive winter for uh, cities and towns treating the roads this, this winter. Well, or we can all have a don't snow and not lot dances yeah. going on and hope that, uh, Hope that the weather is mild this year, but no, it, we there really are costs have gone up uh, for for everything. Um, my husband and I built a pantry, and we're you know we figured we'd be saving quite a lot doing all the work ourselves. And my husband's quite handy, and I can follow instructions. So this seemed like a good idea. Materials were were quite a lot, <laughs> yeah. more than more than we expected, but but it, but it, in a good way. Um, last little thing I have for you is there's a special meeting. Um, I think. Tuesday night, tomorrow night, um, yep. from when we're taping for City Hall. Um, can you tell us what is, um, I looked at the agenda and there was a bunch of like codes. And honestly, Scott, I was like, yeah. I started to Google and like, I have no idea what these are and I'm gonna be chatting with you today. So I thought I would just ask. Right, so we, uh, this is the annual tax classification where, okay. where the city council's asked to determine uh, what shift of the tax burden will go to commercial and what will go to residential. So uh, that's, Going to be tomorrow night so we set the tax the tax rate that helps us to put tax bills out and then to determine what the average tax bill is going to be for the um residents and businesses so that's tomorrow night it's a lot of work that the assessors and the board of assessors work on as well as the uh, financial department so uh, a lot of work but uh, i i think the results are pretty good uh we're going to be using as we said some of our opera funds uh to offset the um some lost revenue, so that that'll help a little bit. That'll help take a little bit of the sting out of the uh, the uh, tax increase. So uh, that's part of it. Uh, we have a couple of supplemental appropriations that we have to get in uh, before setting the tax rate, and uh, that's it for tomorrow night. So it should be uh, probably about a half hour meeting. Starts at five forty-five. So if you haven't seen one before, you might. It's a good you know, one to check out. Well, yeah, check it out. And, we, and we can talk more about it next week. We can talk about the results. Okay. Um, and what that means to taxpayers, if you want to, that'd be good. Yeah, let's definitely plan to do that. I think that would be a really, um, a really yeah. good idea. And, and I can get you, I can yeah. e email you over, copy the presentation so you have it, you know, to Perfect. digest between. Yeah, that would be great. I'd love to take a look at it so I can ask somewhat intelligent questions yeah, uh, of, of that. So that that would be great. Thank you. Um, anything else you want to mention before we invite our next guest on? Anything else going on I forgot to ask about? No, I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and uh, looking forward to the holiday season. And uh, hopefully we'll see people at uh, Festival on the Common and also the, um, the Hanukkah celebration on um, the, the first light, the first night of lighting on uh, Sunday. So looking forward to both those events and uh, urge people to get out to both of them. So it'll be fun. Yeah, we're going to have such a festive uh, weekend coming up. I'm really excited about it. Happy Thanksgiving, Scott. Thanks, Samantha. Same to you. See you guys. Suzanne, welcome. Uh, Suzanne is with us from Tanner Tatas, which does an incredible amount of great work. And I have, to, uh, you know, I've seen some of your work in action. I've been, um, I'm, I'm so pleased we've had a chance to meet uh, today. We had hoped to meet in October doing um, breast cancer awareness. You had an unfortunate uh, knee surgery, but we're <laughs> thrilled you're here now. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really nice to be here. We we um, we really look forward to it. And we like we like talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is good because that's why here. So tell us a little bit about what inspired uh, Tanner Tata's back. You know, you've been in operation for quite some time now. Um, it's it started with um, it's the co-founders, which are, which is um, Michelle Tradella and Aaron Ficicello, um, high school friends, and they were they went to a, a party, a fundraiser, to support a friend. Um, who was diagnosed with breast cancer at a very early age. And then they heard of another friend and they, you know, they just didn't like this. They didn't like, you know, hearing so many friends like this. And they said, you know what? We could raise money. We could, you know, do something. We could have a party. So in the process of planning this party, a few more women were diagnosed and I was one of them. So um, I was one of the first four original women back in 2007. Um, happy to say I'm a survivor today. But um, they slapped on a pink ribbon and put the, the Tana bull right on there and called ourselves the Tana Tatas and decided to have this big pink party known as the Pink Bash. Um, and the first year, um, we raised fifteen thousand dollars. That's an incredible um, bar to set for yourselves that first year. Look at that. Let me tell you, and I'm sure you've heard it before from anybody that lives in Woburn. Woburn people are incredible people. When you need, they step up. Anything, they step up. Any charity, anything. You need help, they step up. And um, the support we've gotten from Movement over the years has just been absolutely incredible. So for those, I think most people um, have heard of Tanner Tatas in one form or another, but just in case you haven't, and Tatas is kind of an American slang term for your boobies. Um, so for anybody who English is not their first language or isn't familiar with the organization, this is a wonderful group that supports women who are in treatment for breast cancer. And um, I don't, Suzanne, tell us a little bit about all the wonderful things that you do to support those women and their families. We do, um, we um, do um, like welcome baskets. We'll do uh, surgical baskets. We do uh, chemo baskets. Um, we'll have baskets for husbands. We do baskets for children, which I think are the most incredible baskets. It's just my opinion. <laughs> but um, we just make sure that these women who get in touch with us, and even the women that are still Tiana Tatas, which is what I'm still a Tiana Tata, you know, if, some, if they're having a bad day or something and we hear about it, there's flowers at their door or there's something little at their door. It's just, we just always make sure that there's something there. That's how, you know, they, they need the support and that's how we support. Well, I think it's a lovely tribute just to, you know, put a smile on someone's face. And, you know, like you mentioned, um, supportive partners, family members of different kinds who are there for their loved one, but, right. um, you know, such a, such a nice thing. How do um, you find out about women and you do, you know, family members typically reach out. Do they sometimes reach out? What's the best way we, for it's them? It's very to different. It's away? very different how we find out. Um, we'll hear about it or, you know, somebody will contact us or a friend or um, that actual person will contact us and say, you know, I just need help or, you know, I heard from a friend of mine about you and, you know, Michelle takes all of those calls and kind of gathers all the information and then Aaron runs from there as far as getting everything together and making sure there's something there for them. I, so. I love that. And um, you recently received a pretty substantial Cummings Foundation grant. Tell us how that money will be used. Actually, that was in 2014. Oh my gosh, why, I, in my head, I thought very recently. So um, good to know. Thank you. <laughs> that was the uh, 100,000 for 10. Yes. Um, amazing. It's just uh, amazing to receive something like that and just to be um, seen 
like that, you know, and to be recognized and just for all the work that we do, it's just, uh, it was just amazing. But what we do, one of the things we do is um, we have a thing called healthy survivors. So any of the tatas, like right now, we have 15 in treatment, but all together, I could, it's gotta be like maybe 50 of us, I don't know. Um, and it's called healthy survivors. And throughout the year, anything you have that you use for healthy, you go to the gym, you get massages, you buy sneakers, you know, you do anything healthy, we reimburse you $200 oh, for the whole wow, year. That's been Incredible. And for those who aren't familiar with the Cummings Foundation grants, the hundred thousand dollars is basically ten thousand dollars a year for ten years. Yeah. And yeah. So it's always great to get a lot of money. But one of the things that's very special about this foundation and grant is it allows folks like yourself to build a program like this that yeah. has durability over time. Right. 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 So that's been huge to us. In you know, just that program alone that helps the survivors. That's it just really gives our, it gives our girls a real um, feeling of support. You know, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. It's well, thank you, for, thank you for caring <laughs> about women's health and um, breast cancer and the families of those folks who were there. If anyone yeah. would like to learn more, Tanner Tatas, we'll make sure the contact information is yes. on the Screen so that folks can make donations or recommend a friend or ask for help themselves if they're um, in need or, or provide other types of support. Thank you so much. Thank you for helping us out there. And thank you, Wolverine. Thank you for joining us, Suzanne. Well, Take I care. am I'm very um, gratified to have Rena and Dale on the show today to talk about the menorah lighting. Last year, um, during the height of the pandemic, was the first year we had the opportunity to have the menorah. And even then, we had a safe outdoor smallish gathering. And this year, we don't have as many constraints. So um, welcome. I know, Rena, why don't we start with you? Tell us a little bit about what's planned for Sunday, which is the Sunday after Thanksgiving. We are so excited. And first, I want to say thank you to you, Samantha, because it was your idea to fundraise to have a menorah to have on our town common. So thank you for being the driver behind that. Um, we are hosting a community menorah lighting at four o'clock on Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. I believe the date is the 28th. Um, and I will let um, Dale actually explain a little bit more about what we are doing. Welcome. Dale has been on the show before. Uh, well, I should say um, Rachel, Dale's um, very wonderful, talented young lady has been on with, with you before. Tell us about the Sunday celebrations. Well, we are definitely looking forward to having a, a great day. And to echo what Rena said, thank you, Samantha, for getting this. Um, for getting this. All started. I did was ask. Um, so well, sometimes that's together. all that it takes. Sometimes someone just has to get the ball rolling, and it was a wonderful thing. Um, each year, we used to go to all of the surrounding towns to celebrate Hanukkah, and so we're very, very excited to be able to do that here in Woburn this year with our own community. So on Sunday, the 28th at four o'clock, we'll, we're inviting everyone down to the common. We will have a menorah lighting for anyone that is not familiar with the menorah lighting. It is, think of it as just a, a place and a time for the community to gather. You don't need to know anything about it to come and have fun with us. Um, we'll have some of the traditional blessings that we say when we light the menorah, but then also we will have some stories, some crafts, some games. My daughter has been furiously working on templates of crafts for the kids to, to um, enjoy. Um, we'll have a little live music. Rena has a beautiful singing voice and I'm looking forward to hearing her sing. Um, my husband will be playing the piano. So I think it will just be a great time and place for everyone to get together, learn about a new tradition and, um, and just enjoy the, the start of the season. Well, Dale, that's wonderful. And Rena, you do in fact have a beautiful voice. You uh, got to share that with us last year and 
as a, as a person who's completely tone deaf and incapable of holding any kind of tune whatsoever, I'm, uh, I'm so in awe of musical, musical talent. I'm really thrilled that you'll be able to uh, join us uh, this year and, and share some of that talent with the community. Thank you. So we do plan on explaining a little bit about what Hanukkah is, but I thought I'd give you a little preview. Um, we are very excited to share our traditions with our community. And we do hope that this is a way for people of other minority religions and other minority traditions in town to also perhaps be inspired to share publicly. I think that we all benefit when we learn from each other's traditions. So please, if you don't know anything about Kanaka, um, if you've celebrated for years, we'd really love to see everybody join us. Um, it is a really special moment. Um, a small note, unlike a holiday like Christmas, which has a fixed date, Hanukkah moves around. Um, Jewish holidays are go by a lunar calendar. So this year, Hanukkah is particularly early. It won't always be this close to Thanksgiving. Um, so keep an eye out for future years. Um, we will always announce, but we'll do it over a weekend during Hanukkah. We intend to keep the, the um, this community menorah lighting going. So the story of Hanukkah is an ancient story um, and it takes place in Judea, which is present day Israel and Palestine now. And the Greeks took over, uh, conquered the land, made it illegal to practice Judaism and destroyed the most holy place for Jews, which is the holy temple in Jerusalem. A small group led by the Maccabee brothers decides to revolt and Lo and behold, even though they're small, they defeat the Greek Assyrian army and their king Antiochus. Hooray! Once they drive them out, they go to restore the holy temple and they discover it's filthy and most of the artifacts have been destroyed. And they discover that the Ner Tamid, which means the um, eternal light, which is incidentally the name of the temple in Peabody that Dale and I both grew up going to um, before we both moved to Woburn. Did you know each other when you were growing up? No. We have <laughs> such not. a small world that you ended up here and we burned together. Yes, it's amazing. Our parents live fairly close to each other. <laughs> um, so the near to me, the eternal light had gone out. They searched and searched and all over Jerusalem, all they could find was enough oil to light the lamp for one night. So they lit it and they sent off somebody to find more oil and they all waited for someone to get back. And while they waited, the lamp uh, lasted for eight days and eight nights. We say that this is like the modern equivalent would be your cell phone has like 5% battery and it goes on for eight days and eight nights before you plug it in again. Uh, my students like that one. That's um, a great analogy that <laughs> I know a lot of people can identify with. So um, we light the Hanukkah, also called a menorah. It has um, eight branches and a lighter candle in the middle called the shamash to represent those eight nights that the miracle of the oil lasting continues. We also eat fried foods like latkes and sufganiyot, which are jelly filled donuts um, to remind us of the oil. Um, and those are the main Hanukkah traditions. It's not the most important Jewish holiday, um, but it is a really fun one. Well, I like anything that has fried food as sort of core and instrumental to the, you know, it's really funny. So I, um, I was not raised Jewish, but my grandmother was Jewish. And I know by Jewish tradition, technically that means we're Jewish. My mother was raised in a Catholic church and we were sort of raised as good people, um, whatever that meant. But, um, but I always, I did have the honor of being invited regularly to holiday festivities and eating and taking part, but I didn't always understand all of the, the meaning behind it. So now all those jelly donuts and fried foods had real purpose, which uh, makes me want to go out and eat them even more. So um, thank you for sharing a little bit of the history with us. Um, it really certainly is a celebration of hope and community and coming together, which is what you both are helping us spearhead. Um, I'm so excited to see many people there. Um, who are um, part of our Jewish community and those who aren't, who just want to come together and, 
and celebrate just like we come together on the festival on the common and do the tree lighting and and many of the other things that we will be doing this very very festive holiday weekend thank you both for joining us um thank you as always Wilburn. please continue to take good care of each other Thank you.